We're again here in Lafayette, New York, just south of Syracuse, and we are at the art studio of Ishii Brown, and this man is incredible. He is a drummer, philosopher, dancer, singer. He's not a storyteller, but he tells stories, so, and a good hair splitter. He splits hairs with me all the time. This is one of the drums, and you call this... This is a powwow drum. Okay. This is for singing powwow songs. And uh, I made this um, it's for myself. And um, um, I, I haven't made so a lot of them in my life, but it works really good, you know. And he's about to pick up one of the drum, one of the sticks, and beat it to show you what it sounds like. You tap on the flat part there. <laughs> Now they claim even the small hand drums a thousand years ago, you could hear them. They would signal each other for hunting or for messages and you could hear them up to 10 miles in the woods. This one here, I'm sure you could probably hear further than that, but um, you really, you can still hear them up to 10 miles away. They claim we just forgot how to listen. This drum would be laid flat at a ceremony and they would start and sit around the drum. If you look at about chapter 60 or something, You'll see a uh, drum circle and them playing and singing songs. My favorite was the turtle, the turtle who rescued the muskrat one. So here's one of the drums he made, and we'll continue on. Hold on a second. Yep. This is uh, this is a uh, this is our written record at the Great Lot. They got it set going. Up. These are 50 chiefs in order, starting with the Mohawks, the Oneidas, the Onondagas. The Cayugas and the Senecas and each peg represents the chief that's has been condoled and is in the spot. Um, that's how you're supposed to do it. And when a peg's missing, that means that the chief, the chief's position is not filled. Oh. But all all the pegs are in this. Have, they have not been taken out. But this is the. Now, how long did it is. take you to carve that? I didn't make this. It's a gift, or yeah, yeah, I traded it for someone. I mean, wow. I've, I've made these. I've, I've, I've made these before, but I did not make this one. But what do you think the time is involved in making one? Uh, this would probably take me about, um, about maybe eight to ten hours to make one of these. And the bone at the top is? Uh, I believe that's deer antler. Not, it's not always bone. Sometimes it's wood. Mm -hmm. You put whatever. What's on there? Um, a lot of times they'll put an eagle, eagle on the top here. Represent an eagle that's on top of the tree of peace. Okay. Okay, this is a turtle rattle. I did not make this. I refurbished it. This was very, very, in very bad condition. I oiled it up, put it back together, and I sing. I make these also. I did not make this one, not at all. But um, these are for ceremonial songs and dances only. Mm -hmm. you know, this is not something. Um, there's a water drum I made. I'm still working on it. I didn't finish it yet. Um, there's a pipe. Um, I make these pipes out of black stone, um, black pipe stone. I've made several of these. I still have a lot of pipe stone left. Um, these are ceremonial pipes for um, smoking traditional Indian tobacco. Here comes one of my favorite pieces. Okay, this is a stone carving I did. I do a lot of stone carvings. I make, um, I make a lot of, I make, I make my living mostly off artwork and a lot of my artwork is stone carvings. I made this, and this represents the good and bad mind, <laughs> good and evil, the, the, the two brothers. Oh, Some might say that. God and the devil. We don't use them terms, but that, that would be something more people would understand. He said two faces. And I went to pick this up and almost got a hernia. This stone is incredibly heavy. It's got to be close to almost a lead it's, it's in consistency. Yeah, it's very hard stone. That was very hard to carve. This is, um, this is just Andrew and my, um, me and my girlfriend. We made a bunch of these. Took us um, one night. One night we did. A, we did. We probably made about eighty of these in one night. Uh -huh. this is, I think okay. there's the last one left. So the material on the outside is. That's rawhide. That's deer deer rawhide. Okay, and turn it over, and the wood is. The wood is. I don't know. We bought the ring. I don't, I don't know what kind of wood that is. They're it's using a, yellow birch. Yeah, it's some sort of some sort of soft wood, I believe. Okay, and the strings are. Um, rawhide. 
Yep. That's rawhide. That's all rawhide. Now, when I started making my drums, you take that hide and soak it till it's slimy and nasty and stretchy, and then you sew the strings in, they're all wet and stretched out, and then you hang it up to dry. And the first one I ever did in the middle of the night, I heard this explosion and it shattered the wooden bow. Really? Because I had it too tight. Yeah, yeah, you have to know what you're doing. You're and they sense. talk to you. They groan and they moan and they click and itch and whatever. Yes, yeah, so same thing with this. You, had, you can't put it on too tight because it's going to shrink. And you never know. Yeah, the it'll, first it'll, couple that you do. It'll implode. Yes. If you put it on too tight. So you have to know exactly the, the medium. To the find. strength of that thing uh, yeah. shrinking is just unbelievable. Yes, I've, I've made a, uh, power drums before that have imploded because I put them on too tight. That was, that was when I was first learning. My, fir my first two did that yeah. in the middle of the night when they got to the dryness of the heat in the house. You know, I hung them on the wall. Now he tells me that when he finishes a painting, he gets rid of it right away. So I don't have a lot of his finished artwork here. But I'd like him just, these are ones that he's working on now. And I've conned him. I actually had to threaten him to get him to, uh, get him to do this. But these are paintings, and he calls, he would call this one here. Um, I don't have a name for that, but that's good. That's going to, that's about the Wolf Clan. That's going to symbolize um, the Wolf Clan. Probably somebody that belongs to the Wolf Clan, member of the Wolf Clan, would buy that or, you know, so mm -hmm. that's, that's what that is. Now, this one here. That one is, um, that one, that, that painting is, it's a representation of what the No Dapo um, protest that took place in North Dakota not too long ago. And um, it's, it's modern contemporary. Um, uh, it, I believe it'd be more of a collector's piece than more than, than, than a market piece. And you probably may or may not recognize our ex-president. Yes, that's that's our ex-president. Probably the best president we've had in a, in a very long time, and that's my opinion. Uh huh. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, it's too bad what happened to him. He got the blame for a lot of things, but I believe he really did try. But that, um, that's the oil attacking the water, and then that's the two snakes uh, wrapped around the two-row wampum. But this painting is not done, so it's going to look a lot different when it's done. Right. And, and that, that painting represents the, um, the fight or the struggle of um, the Node Apple protest that took place in North Dakota. Mm -hmm. And just these other ones are just, just stuff I'm just working on. Mm -hmm. And these are not finished now. No, he, no, they're not He's finished. just in the middle of them, and uh, he's, you never know what it's going to come out at the other end. Yeah, it might, it might look totally different by the time it's done. <laughs> I'm not even exactly sure if that's how they're going to be. It, I can't force myself to do artwork. So that Obama painting, I started that three, four months ago with the plans of having it done within a week or two. But as artwork goes, every artist knows you can't rush artwork. And if you don't feel like doing it, you, don't, you ain't going to do it. It's got to come from the heart. It's got to come from the heart. And if you ain't feeling it, don't pick up that paintbrush because you're going to make a mistake. Or you're going you're gonna to make, um, you're going to paint something that you regret. That's my big fear. Yeah. So <laughs> um, the reason why it's taking so long is because I just don't feel like it. And that's it. So I've, I've started, I've already started paintings after this and already finished them and already sold them. And that's still sitting there. That's just how it goes. Um, I can't explain it. Well, and when you get the urge, even if it's the middle of the night, all of a sudden you'll exactly. wake up with this light bulb over your head. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I know what I got to do. Yeah, and you... most, most of my paintings are done at night. Sometimes, I, you know, I'm done painting at five in the morning, six in the morning, because I get um, time alone, you know, time to think, or that's just how I'm inspired. But I can't rush it. So I just tell people, some people get frustrated with me because I can't rush it and they have orders that uh, I'm late on and I miss. But that's how it goes. What are you going to do, right? Well, thank you very much. I'm glad that I got to um, con you or um, threaten you or make you sweat to yeah, do this because it really, it really turned out. <laughs> I meet you today and you threaten me. Thank you very much. <laughs>